Hey Cartographer Freaks, today is the first episode of Projection Profiles, the show where we actually talk about the different map projections in the cartographic world and what makes them so interesting or so important. And today's first projection profile is the Lambert Azimuthal Equal Area Projection. So let's just jump right in on this one. The Lambert Azimuthal Equal Area Projection is a way of mapping from a sphere to a flat disk or plane that does not accurately represent angles, but preserves area. It's named for the Swiss polymath Johann Heinrich Lambert, who invented it in 1772. And trust me, we'll be hearing about this guy a lot in the future. He seems really into projections. I, I found a lot just searching like Lambert projection, thinking that, oh, I'm just going to run into one. Uh, no, this guy has done a lot of projections. So we'll, we'll be hearing from him later. So there are three versions of Lambert's azimuthal equal area projection. The polar, oblique, and equatorial. Though these can be further defined by being either spherical, as in showing the whole Earth or object, or hemispherical, as in showing part of the Earth or the object. The most commonly used version is the hemispherical equatorial projection, as we can see in this example. The spherical form is still commonly used in geology for plotting the orientations of lines in three-dimensional space, and the oblique form is used in some parts of the National Atlas of the US, alongside the more common Albers projection, which we will be getting to in the future. This colored topographic map of the moon by the USGS is an example of this type of projection and is just darn cool. The European Environmental Agency suggests its use in hemispherical form for statistical analysis and display, and it's proposed for use by the European Union in their official map. Honestly, this map, for being 250 years old, is not doing too bad for itself. Uh, even though it's been used in various forms, you know, Lambert's map has some staying power. Like I said, 250 years. Not bad. But what is going on with the Lambert projection that makes it special? So imagine a plane set tangent at some point on a sphere. Basically like a sheet of paper on top of a ball like in this illustration. Now take an imaginary circle or point and pull the sphere in all directions from that circle or point down to the plane. Voila! You have yourself a map that is very useful and accurate in the small scale, and I have to emphasize small scale. But the shapes at the farthest edges of the map are heavily distorted relative to those at the center. Importantly, and despite this distortion, making your map in this fashion makes it so the area of a shape as measured on the sphere will match the area of the shape measured on the map. So even though Australia looks really wonky, it's actually the same area as it would be measured on a globe. The oblique version is very useful for navigation and topography at small scales due to its preservation of area. So things like topographic maps, sea charts, they can be made with this type of map as long as they're at the center of the actual projection. So where the tangent meets the sphere, that is very important but it, it preserves a lot of the, the shape actually at that point too. As you see, the distortion is highest at the edges. However, this does not preserve the angles on the map. This Tissot's indicatrix shows essentially why the hemispherical version of the map is superior to the spherical. Notice how the circles become more and more oval the further south you go. I think it's clear by this that once you get past the equator, there is a distinct drop in the benefit of this projection. But when we look at the hemispherical version, we can see this map really shine, especially when we, like I said, get down to a small scale. So that's really it for this brief episode of Projection Profiles. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to keep checking in for more Projection Profiles, guys, because there is a whole world of maps out there.